Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another online lesson. Today we are going to talk about currency conversion, which is a continuation from our last lesson, but we will be specifically talking about fees charged for it. In the real world, if we want to have a service done, it has to be paid for one way or another, and that's what we'll be dealing with here. So uh, when we exchange currency, whether we're talking dollars to pesos, pesos to yen, whatever the case is, uh, most banks will provide the service or currency exchange that they charge a fee to convert the currency. This can be done three different ways that we'll be looking at. One can be a flat fee. And this is an example of if you walk into uh, the bank or currency exchange and they say, yeah, we'll convert however much money you want, whether it's $5 or $5,000, and we're going to charge you a set amount, whether that be a dollar or 50 cents or $5 or whatever the case is, um, where you pay the same fee, so it makes sense to convert as much as possible in that transaction, because every time you make the transaction, you have to pay that same fee. You can also do it with buy-sell rates. What this means is, depending on whether you are buying currency or selling currency, selling meaning you're bringing it to them, buying meaning you're getting it from them, there's a different rate involved. And they basically build in a percentage already. So they just uh, slightly alter the actual currency conversion rate to factor in a little profit for them. And the last is percentages. However much is being uh, exchange, we take a percentage of that. So for example, if the percentage was 1%, if you turn in a dollar, 1% of that would be one cent. If you turn in a hundred dollars, the one percent of that would be one dollar. If you turn in a thousand, ten dollars, so on and so forth. So you're putting in a percentage of what you're converting becomes that fee. One could argue in favor of each of those, but these are the realities of what we see. So we'll look at an example of each of those here today. Uh, to start with, a bank char uh, changes U.S. dollars to other currency at a fixed commission of 1.5%. Max wishes to convert 200 U.S. dollars to bot, where one U.S. dollar buys 40.23 Thai bot. So, um, we can start off very similar to uh, what we did last class with our proportions, except the first question is actually asking about commission. Commission, again, is a fee. It's a fee that's made by someone selling something. In this case, they're selling currency um, of 1.5%. So what commission is charged? Max is converting 200 US dollars. They take a fee of 1.5% of that. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you take the percentage up front with the $200 or after we convert it to bot. The, the value of 1.5% is going to be the same no matter which currency it's in. But seeing how we're starting with US dollars, why not just leave it that way? So we have for part A, $200, and the commission is just going to be 1.5% of that. How do you find the percent of something? Always multiply. Again, we have a percentage here of 1.5. We move our decimal two places, so it's 0 0.015, or 0 0.015 would be our decimal equivalent of 1.5%. So we simply multiply these, and we end up with $3. And that would be the commission that was uh, charged in Part A. Now, what does the customer receive? Well, now we can do the conversion, but we're not going to get to convert all $200. We first have to take away the $3 fee. So that fee is taken out, and now what are we left with? We're left with $197. Now, before I even write that down, we're going to be using our proportions here. And the conversion that we have is one U.S. dollar, and that converts to 40.23 baht. We had $200, and dollars is going at the top of our ratios, but we already had a transaction fee of $3, so we are left with $197, and we're trying to figure out how much bot that is worth. Now we go ahead and cross-multiply, so we have X is equal to uh, 40.23 times 197. And we are left with 7,925.31, and that is bot. Again, we can check because we lined up our U.S. currencies, the $1 and the 197, which means our X 
this bot, and that's what they asked us for as well in the original problem. Number two. Frederick had to change British pounds into Swiss francs in a bank. The exchange rate is one great British pound equals 2.5 uh, Swiss francs. There is also a bank charge of three great British pounds for each transaction. So the last problem we looked at, there was a percentage. This time it's a flat fee. So how many Swiss francs would Frederick buy with 133 great British pounds? So he brings in 133 great British pounds. However, right away, there is the fee. So we take away three from the 133 and we're left with 130 great British pounds that we start with. Now, how many Swiss francs can we get for that? Well, let's make up our conversion ratio. Again, we know it's one great British pound for every 2.5 Swiss francs. Um, and we had 130 great British pounds. Again, we are putting the pounds on top of the francs. I would have labeled that if, if I ran out of room. So we're going to have 130 great British pounds on top of our Swiss francs, which is what we don't know. And again, the question is asking for Swiss francs. So we go ahead and we cross multiply. Uh, we get 1 times x, which is x. And we have 130 times 2.5, which gives us 325. And our label on that would be Swiss francs. Part B, let S be the number of Swiss francs received in exchange for B, British, Great British Pounds. Express S in terms of B. So when they say express S, it's sort of like find S, or like we'd say find Y in terms of X, meaning we want to get S alone. So write that, express it, in terms of B, meaning we have Bs in our answer. And again, you'd often see this find Y in terms of X. Y equals some stuff involving X. It says S equals some stuff involving B. So what's the thing that we need to do? We're let, let S be the number of Swiss francs received in exchange for B Great British Pounds. So we start off with B Great British Pounds. The first thing we have to do with our B is we take away three. And I'm sort of relating this to what we just did here. We had 130. Where did that really come from? It came from having 133 and taking away three. So this time we don't have 133 Great British Pounds. We just simply have B Great British Pounds right here. And so we take away the three as our flat fee. We know that our conversion ratio is going to be one to 2.5. And then we know we will end up with um, S is our number of Swiss francs. Now, we have not expressed S in terms of B yet. We just have an equation with both an S and a B in it. And in order to express S in terms of B, we have to get S alone. So we're still going to go ahead and cross multiply. So we take 1 times S, which gives us S, and then we take the 2.5 times the B. But remember, or B minus 3, remember this entire numerator has to get multiplied by the 2.5. So we're taking 2.5, but distributing it to B minus 3. So we have S equals 2.5 times B, and then 2.5 times negative 3, which gives us negative 7.5. a decimal place right there. And this was an S, not a 5. So that would be our equation with S in terms of B. Again, we have S by itself right here, and then our expression has B in it. Finally, part C, Frederick received three, 430 Swiss francs. How many British pounds did he exchange? Well, now we can use our formula that we just wrote to work backwards using a little bit of algebra. So we have 430 Swiss francs. So that's going to go in place of our S right here. So I put in 430 equals 2.5 times my number of British pounds that I started with, B minus 7.5. To get B alone, we're going to start by moving anything else that's on the same side of the equation. Starting with the 7.5, it was being subtracted, so we add it to both sides of the equation. So now I have 437.5 equals 2.5b, divide both sides by 2.5, and I get 437 divided 
I'm sorry, 437.5 divided by 2.5 gives me 175. So B equals 175 great British pounds. So again, that's use of a flat rate, but there's a lot of math going on there with all the conversions and the equations. So we've looked at a percentage, we've looked at a flat rate. The last thing we're going to look at is honestly probably the most common. It's the buy-sell. You know, generally, if you go into a bank or a currency exchange, they'll tell you what you uh, need to use as a rate. But here in the IB test, we treat ourselves as the banker. We have to interpret the data. So a currency exchange service exchanges one euro for Japanese yen using buy at 135.69 and sell at 132.08. Cedric wishes to exchange 800 euro for yen. So the thing to keep in mind here is that we are thinking in terms of the bank. What is the bank's goal? Just like any business, yes, it's providing a service, but their bottom line is they want to make a profit. So. Think about in terms of the bank, they are buying money from you at this rate, 135.69, and they'll give you one euro for that. So this is yen, obviously, so 135.69 yen, they will give you one euro. They're going to take that much in. However, if you bring one euro in, they will sell you 132.08 yen. If you get confused on the buy and the sell, again, remember, it's in terms of the banker. He's the one doing the buying and the selling. Also think about this. If one euro is coming in, they want to give you the least amount possible. That way they're making the most. And so they would give out this lower amount of yen for one euro. However, if they were bringing yen in, they would want the highest amount coming in. So again, the buy sell is in terms of the banker. Bank always wants to get the most and give up the least. So how many yen will he receive? Well, first and foremost, he is bringing in euros. He's getting back yen. So one euro is going to equal the least amount of yen possible, which is again is the sell. The bank is selling him yen for his euros. And we put euros on top, and so we have 800 euros up top, x in the denominator. We go ahead and cross multiply. We get x times 1, which is x, and then 800 times 132.08. So you get 105,664 yen. Now, uh, let's say that uh, this person uh, goes into the exchange, makes the exchange, finds out that his trip was canceled, needs to convert all his money back. So now we take the yen and we use the same idea of the ratio, except this time they're going to take more yen in, 135.69. Again, they're buying the yen from the customer, and then they're giving one euro in exchange for every 135.69 yen. We have yen, 105,664. So those go in the denominator where the yen is. We're trying to figure out how many euros we'll get for that. So we go ahead and cross multiply. We get 135.69x equals 105.664. Divide both sides by 135.69. 135.69. And we get the number of euros back is... Seven hundred seventy-eight. They didn't tell us how to round, but I'm going to do it to uh, two decimals for money. That's generally standard. So seven two. So seven hundred seventy-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. Except this is all euros, so I'll label that as such rather than dollars. And that would be the answer to part B. This one was our answer to part A. Finally, part C, what is the resultant commission on the double transaction? So two transactions, we started with euros, turned it to yen, and the second transaction was we took the yen back into euros. What's the commission? How much did they make for this, uh, this exchange? 
So we take what we started with, which was 800 euros. We subtract what we finished with, which was 778.72. Subtract those and we get $21.28. Uh, and again, that would be euros, not dollars. That was part C. So what have we done today? We have looked at three different ways for banks and currency exchanges to make profit on currency exchanges. One again being a percentage, where we simply take a percentage of the money brought in and then convert after that. The second being um, a flat rate, where you simply subtract that rate at the very beginning, or that fee at the very beginning, and then convert whatever's left over. And last but not least, the buy-sell rate, remembering that we think in terms of the bank, the bank is buying money from you and selling money off, and it always wants to take the largest amount in and give the least amount out. Uh, ignore the project. Of course, we already have that in. And uh, on page 67 and 69 is where you will find some problems dealing with this. And uh, we'll see you next time.